Hi, I'm Mrs. Spohn here, and today we're going to look at monomers and polymers, or really the rationale behind why we make slime in class. So, uh, slime making is a very fun lab. Students tend to enjoy making slime very, very much. Uh, it is a fun thing. Who doesn't like slime? Um, has the potential to get very, very messy. Sometimes the recipes go bad, and you end up with a very sticky mess, but those are few and far in between. Uh, monomers and polymers are very important. Uh, if we think about it, uh, we didn't really define what they are yet, but I just want to point out there are biopolymers, RNA and DNA. Those are polymers. Those are long molecular chains. So that alone makes monomers and polymers very important because we know how important RNA and DNA are. But uh, cellulose, polypeptides, proteins, starches, and latex also fall under the class of biopolymers. In material science, rubber, plastic, nylon, Teflon, glue, which we're going to use, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot of materials that are polymers, and we have to understand polymer science to manufacture these things. Just think about how much rubber or plastic we use in the world today. I mean, um, so many things have pla are plastic-based, so, and it's very, been very beneficial to us to have been able to create uh, these synthetic polymers that really have changed the way we live. So uh, we're going to briefly introduce, uh, introduce monomers and polymers, define them, talk about a few polymer chains and explain why we're going to make glue. So chemistry is the study of matter and its properties and we know that matter is anything with mass that takes up space um, and matter is made up of subatomic particles. These are subatomic, they are beneath the atom, they're smaller than the atom. Uh, the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons and there's actually a lot more um, particles. We have these particle accelerators now, they're colliding things at very fast speeds and we're discovering new particles you know, all the time it seems. And of course protons and neutrons are made up of quarks and there's a whole bunch of other mini subatomic particles, but matter, as far as we know right now, is made up of these subatomic particles and we keep getting smaller and smaller ones. We've gotten down to the level of quarks. Are there smaller particles? We don't know. Uh, subatomic particles, of course, make up the atoms. They are subatomic. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and the smallest amount of any element on the periodic table possible is one atom of that element. Atoms are going to join together to form molecules, which is a sort of a collection of atoms held together by chemical bonds. It's the smallest unit of a um, compound possible, pure substance. So H2O is an example, probably the simplest molecule we could talk about because it's water. We all know and love water. Two hydrogen atoms chemically bonded to one oxygen atom. And that's a molecule. So we know that subatomic particles make up atoms. Atoms make up molecules. So what are monomers and polymers? Well, monomers are small molecules which like to connect with other small molecules. So that's all it really is. And we have a hypothetical monomer here, AB. Monomer AB would like to connect with other small little molecules like itself or even itself and form these long chains. When a small molecule, which likes to bond with itself, does do that, we call it a polymer. Mono means one, poly means many. So it's a combination of monomers, a polymer. So it's a large molecule with repeating subunits. So we'd have AB, 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 AB. It's just a long chain of Monomer is a long chain of repeating molecules. That's what a polymer is. Sometimes polymers like to cross-link. Uh, that's joining two strands together. So let's say we had two polymer chains. We had this polymer chain, a bunch of repeating AB monomers, and we had a repeating chain of CD monomers. Um, these would have different properties, but if we somehow cross-link them, if we introduced a chemical or an atom or an, a compound in the middle that connected these chains together, we're going to change the entire properties of that substance. And that's actually what we do when we make glue. We're going to cross-link two polymers together, two chains together to form slime. So we have CH2, and that's methylene. That's perhaps the simplest monomer that we can talk about. And, of course, it likes to connect with itself, forms a double bond. That would be C2H4, methylene, or it forms ethylene. Methylene forms with itself, combines with itself to form ethylene. And it has a structure that looks like that. But this is a monomer, and methylene is going to keep combining with itself to form a polymer chain. And that's what we mean by a polymer. Uh, we have CH, 
pair, CH2, and it just keeps connecting with itself into a very long chain of molecules. It likes to connect with itself and form bonds of, of that sort. So this is a polymer chain. This is the simplest monomer we can come up with, and this is a long polymer chain of that simple monomer. Um, PVA glue, which we're going to be working with, um, Elmer's wood glue, or Elmer's school glue, not wood glue, um, it contains polyvinyl alcohol, or polyethanol. And it has a molecular structure pictured on the left, C2H4O. So there's two carbons, uh, four H's, and an oxygen. And this little N here means that this is a monomer that's going to like to connect with itself. This complicated monomer, and again, it's not as simple as the CH2 or the hypothetical AB we went over, it's just going to keep connecting with itself. And this is one example of it connecting with itself. We have CHOH, CHOH, and we have CH2, and they abbreviate it as CH2. And again, it's connecting with itself, and it'll keep connecting with itself into a very long chain of that we would call a polymer. This molecule will just keep on connecting with itself, this monomer. And what happens is borax powder. We're going to take this glue, which has this uh, polymer in it, and we're going to put a little borax, which is laundry detergent, laundry booster you get at Walmart or Stop and Shop or something or whatever grocery store you go to. We're going to put that in water and mix it with it. And when you put borax powder in water, you get the borate ion. You get something like this. This ion right here is going to cross-link two of these chains. When we have glue, we have a whole bunch of these polymers in glue. There's a whole bunch of these. This, this monomer connects with itself in glue, and you have a whole bunch of these long, large polymers, these chains of molecules in glue. And sometimes they wrap around each other like spaghetti. Think of it, something like that. Um, and they're relatively free to move around. They can Glue can pour. You can pour glue. It's not as fluid as water. Water pours easily, more, more easily. But glue molecules, even though they're big and bulky, they can move around a little bit. But what happens is when you take two of these very long polymer chains and you cross-link them, well, now the glue molecules have become even larger and they're bulkier and they're stuck to one another. They can't really slide anymore, and that essentially is slime. So cross-linking the glue with the borax or the borate ion actually changes its properties. Instead of a really long molecule like a spaghetti that can kind of slide around one another and can kind of pour still, even though it's, again, doesn't pour as well as water if we talk about viscosity and things like that. The cross-linking, the joining of these large molecules, makes them clumpier. The molecules are even more bulky, so now the glue turns essentially into slime because it's not as free to move because the long polymer chains are stuck together. So just to summarize, white glue, example of a polymer, long chains of polyvinyl alcohol, PVA. Um, these glue chains can slide past one another. Think of like a tangled mess of spaghetti, and they can move around a little bit, so the glue can be poured. Glue is more viscous than water um, because those chains of molecules are much thicker. The uh, molecules are much bigger than the water molecules. Water molecules are small. They're able to move around and slide past one another easier. Glue is, has polymer chains in it, very long, um, very large molecules, but they can still move around a little bit. Um, once we cross-link them with borax, once we link those spaghetti chains together, once they stick together, the polymer chains are not going to slide past one another as easily and essentially the final result is a tangled mass that we know and love as slime. So that's an example or this is our monomers and polymers information we're going to use this information to create slime and you'll use this information to do your lab write-up. Um, hopefully this helps Mr. Spong.